Hey, what's going on guys? It's your old pal, the original gamer, Stevie Stro, and what you are looking at here right now is a little bit of a work in progress, but it is a sneak peek at a new series that I'm going to be doing where I'm, I, I am going to be going through and relearning myself as well as teaching anybody else who is interested how to program in basic on the Radio Shack TRS-80 color computer. So we're gonna be working on a basic language on a 35 year old computer, but through the power of modern technology, we can run this computer on our modern PCs virtually. And I have access to the manual, the book that I used when I was a kid, electronically as a uh, Adobe PDF file. And I'm gonna have links to where you can download all these, as well as show you how to set all this up. And I'm gonna create a kind of a classroom environment. And the screen you're looking at right now, a little bit of a work in progress, but it'll probably look similar to this. I'll be able to use a mouse here to highlight things on the computer screen. I'll be able to use a mouse here and actually scroll through the pages of the book. And that's what the series is gonna look like. The intention of this series is to go through the chapters of the book, discuss them, demonstrate them, um, do the examples, add to that, um, and then put it all together. As After we've learned a few concepts, I'll also come up with some ideas to put all those concepts together and do something fun with them. Um, the goal of this is to not only learn how to program in basic, but to ultimately start writing games. And so once we've gone through the basics of basic, which is almost a contradiction because there's a lot to take in, but once we've covered how to program in basic, then we're gonna get on to writing games. I already have some games in my head that are games and games ideas I had when I was a kid, and we can try to do some of those. And in the process as well, I'm hoping that if people are watching this and enjoying this, that questions and comments will come up and we'll try to address those as well. And maybe during the process, we will all agree on what our first project will be. And so we'll see where this journey takes us, but I'm hoping it's going to be fun informative and who knows what happens so hopefully some people will find this interesting all right so this section here i'm going to basically show you what to download what to install and the few pieces that we are going to need to actually create our virtual color computer and as well as have our um, instruction manual for going through all the programming and there's only two websites you're going to need to know about and the links to those will be in the description of this video the first one we're going to want to go to is coco4.com and that'll take us to the virtual color computer emulator. And so once you go to Coco4.com, you should see a screen similar to this. You will click on VCC emulator. You will click on download files. And then over here on the right, there's a link that says download the VCC file. And you'll want to go ahead and click on that. And now this is where it's going to ask you where you want to save it for the sake of this video and to keep everything in one simple container. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop for right now. So now that you have it downloaded to your desktop, you're going to do a, uh, a right mouse click on the folder that says VCC 1.4.2. You're going to choose extract all. It's going to say where do you want to extract it. We can go ahead and extract it again to our desktop and hit extract. And then what that has created for us is a folder that has the virtual color computer emulator in here. The program you want to run is actually just called VCC. If we double click this file here, this should bring up the virtual color computer emulator. So now we have the software we need to do our programming. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the instruction manual on how to program in basic. And we're also going to need to get a virtual floppy disk that we can use to save our files on. So I'm going to close this for now. And for the sake of convenience, everything I'm going to download, I'm going to download into this VCC folder on my desktop and keep all of my eggs in this basket right here. So uh, let me go ahead and go back to the web browser. The next tab we want to go to is the colorcomputerarchive.com. This will also be in the link to this video. We're going to go to repository. We will go to documents. We'll go to manuals. And then I believe it is hardware. And we're going to scroll down under the letter G. And we're going to look for the file that says getting started with extended color basic Tandy PDF. And um, to make my life easier now, I'm just gonna do a right mouse click. I'm gonna hit save as. I'm gonna ask me where do I wanna save it. I'm also gonna go to my desktop. 
I'm going to go into that VCC142 folder and hit save and I have now put programming manual in that folder with the computer and then the last thing I want to do is I want to download a floppy disk so I'm going to go back up here to the top of the color computer archive I'm going to go to repository I'm going to go to disks I'm going to go to blank disks so I'll pick the first one that says DMK and I'm going to grab a file that is 158k RS disk. This is telling me this is a Radio Shack disk, not an OS9 disk. Different um, formats for different operating systems. So I'll take the small one, the 158K RS disk. I'm going to click on that. Again, it's going to say, where do you want to save it? It's now remembered that I'm going to my desktop into the VCC142 folder, and I'm going to hit save. At this point now, I can close my browser, and I can go to my folder, my VCC folder, and this is the disk file I was looking for. This is the manual that's color basic that we're going to use in this um, presentation when we start doing this series. Here's my manual and here's my program. So here's the last thing we need to do for this program to get it set up to use your floppy disk. I want to make sure you're set up properly and, and all these things will work in all these different lessons. We're going to go ahead and bring back up the VCC. This is your virtual color computer. If I go to my cartridge I want to take a look at my multi-pack interface. This thing pretends to have a multi-pack interface which has four slots. When we click on MPI config, we want to make sure that we're here in slot four. You can change what slot you're in. You want to go ahead and drag it down to slot four, which ensures that you're running your floppy disk controller. You can see here that the different slots have different things in them. And we want to be on slot four for your um, disk controller and then hit OK. The next thing I need to do now is insert that disk. So if I go to cartridge menu, I go down to floppy drive zero and hit insert. It's asking me which disk do I want to insert. I'm going to go back to my desktop. I'm going to go to my VCC folder and I'm going to choose this file right here, which is the 158K Radio Shack disk. Now that I've inserted that disk, I should be able to type in DIR for directory and see that it's blank. And it is a blank disk. What I want to try right now is I want to try a quick program. I want to say 10 print hello in quotes and hit enter. If I type in run, that will run the program. It'll print the word hello. Now I want to save that file. I want to save it as hello. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's on the disk. If I type in DIR for directory, I see I have a file called hello on this disk. Now, to make sure that it's going to stay here when I turn this computer on and off again, if I close the VCC emulator and it's gone, it's now shut down. If I bring it back up, it should remember that I inserted that disk into that drive. And if I type in dir, I should see that the hello file is still here. I could actually load the hello file and I can run and it printed the word hello. So basically what I've just shown you is how to download and install the virtual color computer emulator, how to get the instruction manual for programming in extended basic, which we will use in this series. And then I also showed you how to download um, a virtual floppy disk and make sure that disk is inserted into the virtual disk drive because as we're working on our programs, we're gonna to wanna to save our programs because you don't wanna lose your work. So now that we've basically gotten our virtual color computer set up with our floppy disk and with our manual, so I'll leave you with something I put on every computer screen I ever walked into. Anytime I walked into a retail store and there was a computer connected to a television, and I had access to the keyboard. This is what I did, and this is a sample of one of your first programs that you may write. I typed in my first line, 10, space, print, space, quote, Steve is cool, exclamation points, end quote, enter, 20, go to 10. And what this is basically gonna do is gonna print my name on the screen, forever. So I'm telling the computer to print Steve is cool and then I'm saying go back and do it again and this will happen forever. So when you type in run, boom, Steve is cool. And so this was my own little 
photo bomb Easter egg, whatever you want to call it that I did. Anytime I got my hands on a computer, I walked into a store, I did this, I walked away. That's your first taste at writing a program. We will break these steps down, simple and easy. We'll explain them. We'll give you examples. We'll give you metaphors. We'll try to make it easy. We'll try to make it fun. We'll try to make it as visual and comprehensive as possible. And who knows, we may all end up being super cool programmers and game developers. So I hope you enjoyed this. I am looking forward to getting back into programming myself, reliving more memories besides just playing games, but actually making games. And then who knows where we all go on this journey. All right, that's it. I've been talking a long time. I'm going to shut up now, but let's start programming people.